<sighs> it's happened again. To go alongside the remote code execution that we saw in React Server Components last week, they now have two new vulnerabilities. One of them is a denial of service, and the other can leak your server's source code. And again, both of these are done with a very simple post request. So make sure you're upgrading Next.js or React immediately, as the previous patch does not solve these vulnerabilities. And let's just jump straight in and see what has happened again. I'll start off by showcasing the denial of service vulnerability since that one is the most severe. Here I simply just have a Next.js application that was created on version 16.08 and I've made no code changes to this, I don't have any server actions, but it is still vulnerable to this issue. If I now send this very simple post request to that server, we can see our first indication that something is wrong in how long this takes to connect, we're up to 20 seconds so far. And if I go back and actually try to load my site now, I get absolutely nothing. We have now caused a denial of service. We can also see that by sending a very simple get request to try and get the web page and you can see it is just not working. So how did this very simple post request do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple and it all comes back to the React Fight protocol and how it deserializes chunked information. Now I actually covered this in depth in our last vulnerability video, so do check that out and subscribe to stay up to date in the developer world. To give a quick recap though, if we send chunked information to the React server, the React Flight protocol deserializes this and we end up with this final object. The way it's doing that is when we have chunk zero here, we have this dollar sign notation, and this is saying go to chunk one to find your information. So chunk one is simply the object here, and this object also has a dollar two sign, which means find your information on chunk two, and eventually with these chunk references, it will resolve to this final object. What we're doing in the denial of service post request though, is we're saying chunk zero goes to chunk one, and chunk one goes to chunk zero, so this gets stuck in a loop, and that means that it gets stuck on this HTTP request and can't process any more. It is actually pretty mind blowing to me just how simple this vulnerability is and the fact that it hasn't been seen before. This is the actual CVE for this vulnerability. You can see it's ranked as 7.5 high severity. There's actually two CVEs created as they tried to patch it the first time. That didn't fully work. So they released a second patch and also a new CVE. We can see on GitHub just what that patch was. For the second one, they simply just added in a hard check. So we have a cycle protection here. And if it goes through too many cycles, in this case, just a hard coded number, which is a thousand, it's simply going to error out. The first patch they tried is a little more complicated, but essentially what they're doing is just keeping track of the existing references that they've already explored. And if they do come across one that they have already explored, they're simply just going to refer to it by its ID instead of trying to explore it again. So that's the first vulnerability, a denial of service, and it is the most severe one. But now let's take a look at the second one where there's a chance that you're able to leak your server action source code. For this one, we do need to be using a server action. As you can see here, I have one called submit name that simply takes in a name, it creates a connection to the database, adds that name to the database, and then returns a message saying hello name. Now, if I send this post request specifically targeting that next action. In the response that we get back, you can see down here that we have our secret key that was written in text and also just the entirety of the function. So we have leaked the source code. Now, obviously you wouldn't actually put your secret key in the source code itself, or at least I hope you wouldn't. If you're using environment variables, you would be safe here, but it is still leaking your source code. Now, the root cause of this issue is again in the React Flight protocol and how information is deserialized, but this one is a little more confusing, so stick with me. What we had is we had our submit name server action. This took in name as an argument. Then we sent it over some chunk data via that post request that I just sent, and this is going to be deserialized into the name argument. The trouble is, when we actually deserialize this, we have this $F1 notation that is saying this is referencing a server function. Then in chunk one here, I simply pass it the server function ID that I am referencing, and in this case, I was actually referencing the submit name function itself. So essentially what this is actually going to be resolved down to is in the submit name function for the argument of name, we are passing it the function itself. Now I know that might sound confusing, but essentially all it is doing is exactly what I've done here. We have our submit name function and we pass it through the function itself. And you can see we get the exact same result where our message over here is leaking the source code for the submit name function. Now the reason that is happening is because when you do do to string on a function, it is simply going to give you the code for the function itself. And here we've turned the function into a string by using this template literal. Just to showcase that even clearer you can see here if I have a demo function and I call the two string function on it which is essentially all that is happening when we use it in a template literal you can see we get the code back for the function the fix for this one can be seen here and it's incredibly simple all they're doing is overwriting the normal two string function using our own one called server reference two string when that is called it is simply always going to return the value of function and then omitted code so it's no longer leaking your source code this CVE was given a score of 5.3 as you can see it has a medium severity that's because while it's leaking some of your source code again you probably should 
shouldn't have any secret keys hard coded in that server action itself. You should be using environment variables and the scope of this is pretty limited. There we go, two new vulnerabilities. Make sure you're upgrading immediately. Now I do also want to include a note from the React team stating that it is common for more vulnerabilities to be found when you have a big one like React 2 shell that we saw last week. That's simply because researchers start to scrutinize the area of code where the original vulnerability occurred and also adjacent ones a lot more when they're looking for bypasses for the original issue. Hopefully though, this is the last of the high severity ones that we see, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. While you're there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.